I'll see if I can just get you guys to understand what we're going to do for this one. So the main important thing what they want us to do is they want us to find our standard form, right? Equation? So we want to find the standard form. The main thing is we need to figure out what standard form we're looking for. Are we looking for one where we're going to have hyperbolas that are going to open left and right? Or are we looking for ones that are going to have hyperbolas opening up or down? So it's very similar to what we would deal with ellipses, but there's a little bit of a difference. So to determine what we need to look at, let's just graph it. I know the center actually is also at 0, 0. So my vertices are at plus 1 and negative 1. That's kind of not really the scale. Right? Mm -hmm. So my vertices open and open, I'm sorry. My vertices are negative one and positive one. So, ladies and gentlemen, just like ellipses on a hyperbola, your vertices, your foci, your center all lie on, you know, an axis of symmetry. So, which way do you think our, so which way do you think our hyperbolas are? They going to be um, vertical or are they going to be horizontal? Mm -hmm. They have to be horizontal, right? They have to be horizontal because we can't. Because remember, here's your vertice. Then you're going to have your foci. Well, obviously, if you have your foci, they're all going to lie on the same axis. You can't have now vertical hyperbolas. So the difference with hyperbolas and ellipses is before, with an ellipse, remember, we were adding, right, between your x, you are adding those two. And it didn't really matter which one we did first. But the major point that we always had was our major axis was our a was always under whatever our major axis symmetry. If it was vertical, then our A was under our Y, and if it was horizontal, it was under our X. Well, here it's a little bit different because our formula now is going to be tell us we're going to be subtracting. Okay? So now we're going to be subtracting. So therefore, our major axis, or not really a major axis, but now um, where we're going to be opening is going to be subtracting from our B. So our A is now going to be subtracting from the B, and therefore, since this is going to be a horiz since this is going to be opening up horizontally, I'm going to use x minus h up there. Y minus k. So the main important thing I'm trying to you know state is if this was a vertical, if it was going to open up vertically, then the y minus k would be under the a. Okay? But the a squared and the b squared do not change for hyperbola. That's one thing you guys need to understand, the difference between your hyperbola and your ellipses. Okay? For your ellipses, we always had the a squared under whatever, um, whatever it was. If it was a horizontal major axis, then it was under the x. If it was vertical major axis, it was, the a was under the y. Well, here, your a is, it's always going to be a squared minus b squared. And determining if it's going to be opening up horizontally, um, you'll have your a x first, and if it's opening up vertically, you'll have your y first. So, so we have We know that that's 0 and 0, so y equals plus or minus b over a times x, because your k and your h are both zeros. So let's think about it, ladies and gentlemen. If I have five plus or minus 5x is equal to plus or minus b over a, the only thing I know is a is 1, then what number over 1 has to equal 5? 5, right? So therefore, b has to equal 5. Um, then all I need to do is just plug that in. So I have, so I'll just plug in a five squared for there, which equals 25. So x squared over one minus y squared over 25 equals one. And there you go. That's your standard form of your equation. Too hard. Too hard.
Oh, no. Yeah, let's do that.